Welcome to the Long Box Paradox, episode 41. And uh, this is going to be an interesting episode because, well, the stuff I picked to review, uh, some of it I had some opinions on. Um, and uh, being that the warning is now unloaded, uh, we have yet again another issue of Batman out. Uh, Batman number 79 by Tom King and Clay Man. Um, like normal, I will open with saying Clayman's art is pretty damn great in this issue. Um, and that is probably the only positive thing I will say about this issue. Um, I keep hoping that maybe everything in this run will make sense. Um, some strings will be tied together. And the writing might improve. And um, I'm continually wrong. And um, yeah, I'm basically uh, hate reading, I guess, at this point. And hate reviewing. Well, not even hate reviewing. It's more of a frustration. So we pick up where last issue left off and uh, starts with a flashback right off the bat. And it's showing from year one Batman and a prostitute, Selena Kyle. Uh, but it's not Batman, it's Bruce Wayne in disguise. Um, they, they're still doing the back and forth of. We first met on the street, no, on the boat, on the street, on the boat, on the street, on the boat. Uh, Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. Batman, is still running around looking like Tom Selleck, uh, Magnum P.I., his matches Malone identity. And they're on the beach, they're still kind of trying to get their idea of what they're going to do. Magpie apparently is selling Venom. Um... We then go to a scene of Catwoman doing uh, Pilates yoga on top of a Tom Selleck looking Bruce Wayne doing one arm push ups while she is doing uh, acrobatics on top of him. Um, then they go, they're listening to reports at the bar. He's drinking ginger ale and he's doing, he, she, they're, they're talking about. Um, kind of what's going to happen and what's going on. And the radio is talking about what's going on in Gotham right now. And there's a, a bro at the bar and he's talking about how this new Batman got some balls and things are changing and he gets punched out. And um, they go to the their villa and the, um, they're in bed and he's like, you're beautiful, so beautiful. And she's doing the, you know, you're supposed to grunt and say, it's my problem. And then I get all mad and we have to fight. Um, still saying bat and cat. Uh, they finally go out in the street and dress up. And they stop a robbery at a convenience store. Um, kick the shit out of a guy in a mask. Um, a lot of it is Selena's dialogue. And then they're doing the whole fucking street and... Street and... Um, boat and then they're still talking about it um batman's like i wish we could stay justice here and she's like people are hurting you need to fight and you need me and so fight for them with me besides you and i'll fight with them fight for them with you besides me and then it's i love you cat i love you bat dialogue uh then we have a pretty great scene of them on jet skis um, again, yeah, Clayman's art is pretty fantastic. Uh, she quotes Kite Man because, sure, why not? Kite Man's a pretty relevant character, only in this Tom King run. Um, and the, the, the fight dialogues were, I don't tell you enough, Cat, how good you are. Blah, 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 that's okay, Bat. I don't tell you enough that you don't tell me enough. Uh, they kick the shit out of, um magpie and then they have a back and forth about this diamond that she's tried to steal and he takes it away and they're walking away and she's like bad as anyone ever told you before you're no fun he says thank you and she says this is what love is it's who takes care of you that's all it is um of course this takes place before um what happened in issue 77 because he says that alfred you know, message him to say he's okay and they're going to send Damien in. So, um, he's the reason why Damien went in. 
Um, and then they do the whole bullshit again of why he considers they first met on the boat and not the street. And they come to this decision that they met on the beach. Yes, we met on the beach. We agree. Holy shit. Bane is in trouble now. This is how the book ends. I, I know there's people falling over themselves just because they're getting their bat and cat ship um, being fulfilled here, I guess. Um, it's just not good. It really isn't. And this is the city of Bane, and we have no Bane. Like, no Bane. Um, just... I, I don't see how this run ever ends satisfying anyone. I actually don't understand how people actually like this run. I, I mean, the, the one saving grace is they've had some great artists on this run. Uh, Joelle Jones... Um, Tony Daniel, when his art wasn't completely inconsistent. Uh, David Finch. Uh, of course, you know, um, Clay Mann. Uh, Michael Jannon has not been the best art on here, but it, it, it works. Um, boy, the, the, the dialogue is just rotten. Rotten. Like, who talks like this? I... Uh, yeah, 5 out of 10, just 5, again, the art saves it. I, 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 it hurts me to have to, like, just bag on Batman constantly. And I really hope the next writer, they, they really get someone who is not having therapy session every issue, um, Please bring a Brian Edward Hill on to write uh, somebody. I I don't I don't care at this point. Just somebody who's just gonna give Batman his balls back. Um. So I'm gonna end it with that because I, I really don't want to go on a tirade and I feel it building up and I I don't want to do it because I am saving that up for another useless comic that came out this week that. Did nothing for me. And from DC Comics, we have Flash Forward. How do we bring back Wally West, get him his, redeem him, you know, after just freaking Tom King fucking him left and right and... Well, they give us Scott Lobdell writing with Brett Booth's art. Brett Booth's art is very good in this. Um... And I will say the Enoch Lee variant, fantastic. But we start out with the Dan Didio creation, um, Tempest Fuginaut. I You saw him appear in Sideways. Um, and guess what? More dark multiverse bullshit. This is how we're going to redeem Wally West. He's going to have to deal with the fucking dark multiverse. Can we please stop beating this dead horse? Please. And there's a flashback of Wally and Arsenal. And they're at Sanctuary. And they're talking about the food and the pantry. And then, you know, Wally's talking about... He is in jail. He's got his power dampener on. That's, you know, slows his body for the safety of others. But he's talking about how he doesn't sleep. His mind's just going a million miles an hour. And, you know, dealing with his prison life. He's at Blackgate. Um, he gets attacked by some of the people he put in or new people he did. Um, he is saved by Murmur after being attacked by Double Down. And Murmur is basically doing it just so that he can suffer as long as possible. Uh, he tortures himself by having Linda Park come and interview him about what happened at Sanctuary. Um, and he's, you know, dropping legal counsel. Um, we see elsewhere a character is trying to get the Mobius chair and uh, he gets on it it basically fries his mind 
And while he's still having dreams of what happened at Sanctuary and is attacked by Girder and Tar Pit and they break his dampener and he's able to fight back finally. And then Tempest Fujinot shows up and takes him away to the dark the the multiverse and shows him, you know, the dark multiverse kind of like a virus getting into the world. Gives him back his uniform and he throws him into another universe where we see the another super president Superman and yeah, you know, just that's the last page. It's Wally going, Whoa, what's going on? What's happening? And um I basically thought this issue was just pointless. Yeah, uh, it just lacked a, a ton of stuff. Um it, it, after what they did to Wally West and then to start the series by like jamming him into the freaking dark multiverse bullshit, I, I just it's a waste. It's a waste of the character. I, I wanted more of like a real redemption, and this isn't it. Uh, I, again, um, Lobdell's not exactly what I'd call a fantastic writer. And then Brett Booth, uh, you, you waste his art on this. Um, he he, I I love his art, and it's pretty crisp. Uh, I'm giving this a 4 out of 10. I, I just, I did not enjoy it at all. And that's a shame because there was part of me, like, really looking forward to how are they going to bring Wally back and if this first issue is any indication of what this series is going to be, I, I'm out. I just, it's, it was not good. So, with that being said, we're going to go to a book that I really enjoyed and from Boom Studios Once in Future number two uh, Kieran Gillen, Dan Mora and Tamara Bonvillain uh, really step it up in this issue. I liked issue one this one to me was even more impressive because they now showed what the uh, what the fear is why the grandmother was freaking out and um, it's truly terrifying. So Duncan's grandmother takes him by gunpoint out to Glastonbury. And she's kind of talking about, you know, they're going on a quest. They're searching for wolves. Where they go, the ladies of the lake are there. They're floating in the air. Um, they're apparently unearthly demon ladies. Uh, the grandmother, of course, she is rather um, kind of snarky, humorous. And we see the group uh, that took the scabbard of uh, Excalibur, and they are opening King Arthur's tomb, and they say at last, the once and future king, and put it in there. Uh, Duncan and Grandma are uh, basically arming themselves to the teeth to go down there, and they're too late. The body of Arthur, the skeleton, is rising. And it's got its crown on. And Gran is like, oh, bugger. Uh, you know, and he's coming up. He's speaking Old Britain. Um, he goes into the, st the stone and pulls out the sword. And they all go to kneel. The, the people who are the enemy faction, I guess you'd call them. And he pulls up, Arthur's body pulls up the sword, takes his hand of one of the characters and cuts his hand open. And then this demonic tongue comes out and licks the blood. And the guy's like, whoa, what was that? And the girl's like saying, wait. And then all of a sudden... Arthur turns and bug-eyed and says Anglo-Saxon and cuts him in half and goes one by one and starts cutting apart all of the the Anglo-Saxon and his brothers while the girl is kneeling. As she kneels, she gets hers cut. He drinks of her blood 
and then he comes and says, you come to pay hom homage to the true king of Britain, Celt. And Gran is saying the the woman who is kneeling was once her partner. And Arthur goes and then raises the dead and they become his knights. He says, rise, Gawain. And the woman says, the land is sick. The king and the land are as one. I have a boy who would be a knight. My Galahad, he can bring the grail to you. And Gran's like, oh, he, she, she's made a Galahad and that's it. Let's go. That what and he's like, what's a uh, Duncan say, asking? What's a Galahad? Uh, worst case scenario, end of the world, or maybe just the end of the world worth living in. And Duncan accidentally kicks a stone and makes a noise, and the knights appear. Very fast moving issue, um, but they show the true dread of King Arthur in this, and how you know he's like a almost demonic entity now. And part of it kind of reminds me of um, Hellraiser a little bit. How Frank, as he drank of blood, was having pieces come back and, like, grow back. And as he's drinking the blood, you see, like, his intestines have come back. Um, Dan Mora, uh, the art moves well. It tells the story well as the story moves on. Um never got bored with this issue again um fantastic as really great second issue to follow up on what i thought was a pretty great first issue um boom is stepping it up and having two now books pop up and sell well um something is killing the children was very good and this also has been fantastic but kieran gillen's a great writer um, definitely, this is 100% a buy. Uh, definitely check it out. Um, 8 out of 10 for me. Uh, I strongly feel that it, it's a solid 8. Uh, another book that came out I didn't get to, but I'm sure you've seen the spoilers, was the Sarah Pacelli, Henry and J.J. Abrams comics, Spider-Man number 1. Uh, there's, you know, a shocking twist to it, um... What I would say, though, I'm I'm not bullish on it, but Unknown Comics had a Shannon Mare or Mar variant with Mary Jane on the cover that was just absolutely stunning. Um, if they still have it, I recommend checking it out and picking it up. Um, with that being said, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell me what you're reading. Tell me what you think of some of the books. Um, Always interested in a little bit of feedback or talking some comics. Take care, guys, and happy hunting. Bye.